Welcome to this video on restoring equilibrium. So in the last video, we saw this equation where sulfur dioxide and oxygen went to sulfur trioxide. And we learned that that could be expressed as an equilibrium constant, Kc. And that showed the ratio of how much product was produced compared to how much reactant once it had reached a state of dynamic equilibrium. So for example, for this equation right here, we'd put the concentration of the products, that's SO3, and to the power of the number of moles divided by the concentration of the reactants, again, to the power of the number of moles. So in this case, we might get a Kc like 200, which means we have 200 times as much product as we do reactant. But what if instead of just letting this reaction take place, we add a whole lot of oxygen gas in there? So we increase this number of reactants. By increasing the concentration of oxygen, that will affect our Kc, in this case, making it lower. We need to know what will happen to Kc, our equilibrium constant. Will it stay the same or will it change? The rule that we need to know is Le Chatelier's principle, which says equilibrium moves in the direction that reduces the change. So if we were to increase the amount of oxygen, equilibrium would try and reduce that change and therefore make a whole lot more product so it would make more SO3 to use up the extra oxygen added. So it would move the equation to the right in the forwards direction. Whereas if we added a whole lot more product, a whole lot more SO3, again, equilibrium would move in the direction to reduce the change. So it would move to the left to try and balance that out, producing more reactants to get rid of some of the product. Ultimately, trying to get the number back to the original 200. So that's the first thing we need to know. If you add more reactants, it's gonna to move to create more products. If you add more products, it's gonna to move to create more reactants. And the reverse happens if you take things away. Like if you take away oxygen, equilibrium will move to try and create more oxygen, always reducing the change. And there's two other applications of this as well. The first of that is heat. So for example, if we have a reaction where we join hydrogen and oxygen to make water, that gives out heat as part of the reaction. Therefore, we can kind of think of heat as being a product. Now, technically, it's not a product, but we can think of it that way. Or conversely, if we're breaking apart carbon dioxide into carbon and oxygen, that needs heat to take place. So we can think of heat as a reactant in this case. So again, if we're looking at our equilibrium constant, we can think of heat as a product in the first reaction and a reactant in the second reaction because it needs heat. So if we change the heat, we're gonna change the Kc because it's like changing a product or reaction. And the direction again will be determined by Le Chatelier's principle. Secondly, let's look at pressure. The rule for pressure is that as pressure increases, equilibrium will move in the direction with the least number of gas particles. And remember this is gas particles, not any other type of particles. So if we look at our original equation, on the left-hand side with reactants, we have two SO2s, and an oxygen particle. So we have three gas molecules on this side, and we have two SO3s on the right-hand side. So therefore, the right-hand side has two gas particles, and the left-hand side has three gas particles. So if we increase the pressure, the equilibrium will move to the right. Also bear in mind that if we decrease the pressure, equilibrium will move to the left as well. So here's what you need to know. The first is Le Chatelier's principle. You need to know that if you change anything, equilibrium will move in the direction that reduces the change. And that can include heat. So heat can be thought of like a product or a reactant. It will affect Kc. If your reaction produces heat, heat is like a product. If your reaction needs heat, heat is like a reactant. And finally, pressure. Increasing the pressure means equilibrium will move in the direction with the least number of gas particles. Let's look at a question you might get now. So we've got this equation here, or a system they're calling it, which is PCl5, it's gas, going to PCl3 and Cl2. It's breaking apart. So can we state if the amount of chlorine gas would increase or decrease? So they're going to give us two changes here. One is that PCl3 is removed, and the second is that the pressure is decreased. What we're going to have to do is state if the amount of chlorine gas would increase or decrease, and we're going to have to justify our answer. So first of all, if we remove PCl3 gas, what is going to happen? If we remove a product, remember, equilibrium is gonna move in the direction to reduce that change. 
the system is going to produce more product, so more PCL3 to try and balance that out, and therefore it's going to move in the right hand direction. So we can say the number of CL2 will increase because more products are going to be produced. And the reason is that equilibrium will move in the direction that reduces the change, which is to the right. Because PCL3 has been removed, it's going to make more PCL3 and hence will make more CL2 in the process. The second question, if we decrease the pressure, remember our rule that equilibrium will move in the direction with the least number of gas particles if the pressure is increased. So we're going to do it opposite because the pressure is decreased. So on the left hand side we have one gas particle. On the right hand side we have two gas particles. Therefore, if the pressure is decreased, it will move to the right, to the side with the most number of gas particles. And the reason is that as pressure decreases, the equilibrium will move in the direction with the greater number of gas particles. This is to the right, and CL2 is on the right hand side, therefore the amount of CL2 will increase. This is how equilibrium reactions balance out any changes.